If God does it all, and nothing happens apart from God, even the wickedness and cruelty of men, being still overruled by him, you readily may submit. How graciously and with what good face can you kiss the hand which smites you? The husband is gone to heaven. God took him. The property has melted. God has permitted it. You were robbed, you say. Well, think not so much of the second cause. Look to the first great cause. You strike a dog, he bites the stick. If he were wise, he would look at you who use it. Do not look to the second cause of the afflictions. Look to the first great cause. It is your God who is in it all, your Father, God the infinitely good. What would you desire to have done on earth, your will or God's will? If you are wise, you say, not my will, but yours be done. Then accept the ways of providence. Since God appoints them, accept them with grateful praise. Herein is to true sacrifice to God when we can say, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. We have received good at his hands, and we have blessed him. Heathen men and publicans might have done that. But if we receive evil and still bless him, this is grace. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. If we can bow before his crushing strokes and feel that if the crushing of us by the weight of his hand will bring him honor, we are content. This is true faith. Give us enough grace, O Lord, never to fail in our loyalty, but to be the faithful servants even to the suffering's bitterest end. O oh, to have the mind thus subjected to God, some kick at the doctrines of divine sovereignty, but I fear it is because they have a rebellious, unhumbled spirit. Those who feel obedient to God cannot have God cried up too much, cannot yield him to absolute authority. Only a rebellious child in a house wishes the father to be tied by rules and regulations. No, my father must do right. Let him do what he wills. What is the right spirit in which to contemplate all this? The first is humble adoration. We do not worship enough, my brethren. Even in our public gatherings, we do not have enough worship. O worship the King. Bow your heads now, bow your spirits rather, and adore Him that lives forever and ever. Your thoughts, your emotions, these are better than bullocks and he-goats to be offered on the altar. God will accept them. Worship him with lowliest reverence, for you are nothing, and he is all in all. Next, let the spirit of your hearts be that of unquestioning acquiescence. He wills it. I will do it, or I will bear it. God help you to live in perfect resignation. Next to that, exercise the spirit of reverent love. Do I tremble before this God? Then I must seek more grace that I may love him as he is not love him when my thoughts have diminished him of his splendor and robbed him of his glory, but love him even as an absolute sovereign. For I see that sovereignty exercised through Jesus Christ my shield and his anointed. Let my love, my God and King, and be a courtier, happy to be admitted near his throne, to behold the light of the infinite majesty. Let our spirit be that of profound delight. I believe there is no doctrine to the advanced Christian which contains such a deep sea of delight as this. The Lord reigns. The Lord is king forever and ever. Why then, all is well. When you get away from God, you get away from peace. When the soul dives into him and feels that all is in him, then she feels a calm delight, a peace like a river, a joy unspeakable. Strive after that delight this morning, my beloved, and then go and express it in your songs of praise. If you are alone this afternoon, any of you, and not engaged in service, be sure to bless and magnify your God. Lift up your hearts in his praise, for whoso offers praise glorifies God. May the Lord bring us all, through faith in Christ, into harmony with this ever-blessed and ever-living God, and unto him be praise and glory 
forever and ever. Amen.